Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shroff and Abhishek, for this opportunity. I'd like to start with a patient, a 34-year-old uh, woman who presented and who was being treated with us uh, for recurrent retinal detachments. You can see in this picture, peripheral retinal detachment, uh, ERM with macular edema, and uh, well-lasered, extensively lasered peripheral retina. And she had uh, new vessels in the iris and kept bleeding in the vitreous cavity repeatedly. And she was being treated conservatively. Over and end, we had to do a definitive treatment, uh, do a peripheral retinectomy and inject silicon oil, and she's been doing well since then. So the Danish proverb of it's never, uh, it's be, uh, uh, late, better late than never, does not probably hold for this opportunity, uh, for this entity. Uh, the delayed complications may arise because of the implants or the procedure, and pre-existing pathology, intraoperative influences, and patient-related factors may contribute. So the, uh, coming in late actually uh, helps because most of the things have been covered earlier. And uh, to prevent buccal-related complications, it's best to have a, a contamination-free surgery and take care of the ocular and systemic immunity. Uh, whenever a buccal removal is uh, uh, contemplated, a prophylactic 360 barrage uh, is uh, advisable. A buccal removal should be followed with its culture and antibiotic rinsing of the uh, conjunctival sac. Watch for retinal redetachment. Always keep an autograph ready, a scleral patch graft, just, uh, especially when scleral necrosis is suspected. Other options of observation, congenital flapping and scleral patch grafts may act as temporary measures to tide over the time till retinopexy takes over. Silicon oil emulsification uh, is a, a significant com complication and so in some cases contributes to almost 50% uh, 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 of the cases can, uh, may have silicon oil emulsification and related complications. Various uh, causes have been um, speculated and it does definitely increase the risk of uh, other complications. To prevent, it's uh, essential to minimize intraoperative bleeding and uh, inflammation, uh, ensure an optimal fill by doing a meticulous base shaving. Higher viscosity oils uh, are known to decrease the incidence of emulsification. And whenever uh, silicon intraocular lenses are there, it is better to expand and exchange the intraocular lens. Uh, silicon oil removal may be performed earlier in patients who have pre-existing glaucoma or patients who are prone to develop early emulsification. When uh, performed, uh, AC wash, followed by silicon oil removal and multiple fluid exchange is advisable. Retinal redetachment is one of the dreaded complications for a VR surgeon and the main causes are PVR and formation of new breaks or previously breaks not being treated adequately uh, are well known. Uh, lack of encerclage and inadequate vitreous removal in combination does contribute to the uh, increased incidence of retinal redetachment. The risk factors are many, we are well aware of them and the management is it's be better to do, put an encerclage complete removal of vitreous and membranes to a retinectomy whenever essential, look for intraoperative uh, uh, breaks uh, and uh, subclinical detachment, treat all the breaks adequately and uh, uh, think about a longer uh, temperament. Epimacular membranes, uh, the incidence is variable, um, it usually presents between one to six months. Uh, risk factors like large retinal breaks, chronic detachment, intraocular inflammation, and hemorrhage are, uh, does increase the incidence. Um, uh, it's better to remove uh, the vitreous meticulously. Intraoperative use of trimstone may aid uh, and re reduce, help reduce the incidence of uh, epimacular membrane. And there are some reports of prophylactic ILM peeling be performed to avoid this complication. So whenever it uh, occurs, secondary ERM removal is always advisable, and OCT as in this case, uh, you can see in the first case it's advisable because the foveal contour is distorted, not so probably in the second case. So OCT does help in deciding when to and how much to pee. post retinal complications can happen late, as we discussed earlier. The management is best left over to the glaucoma surgeon. Uh, there are some cases where a retinal surgeon may be called in, uh, where probably a retinectomy, which is not so uh, commonly performed, um, may have help in an uh, intractable case. Vitreous cavity hemorrhages, con uh, most common cause is antihalide proliferation and residual vascular membranes. The remedy is uh, we can uh, opt for intravitreal avastin. Repeated injections would be required, antiretinal cryo to treat the unablated retina, vitreous cavity lavage, and longer uh, tamponade with silicone oil. Chronic hypotony uh, may happen because of ciliary body uh, complications, atrophy or detachment, and whenever there is a mismatch between aqueous and drainage, 
uh, FS formation and drainage. Whenever uh, it happens, steroids may be employed uh, in the treatment, either topical, PST, intravitreal, or oral. And when this fails, long-term uh, long silicon oil temperament would be required. Sympathetic ophthalmia is a rare, but uh, the incidence is rising uh, following VR surgery. Prevention is best to maintain uh, globe integrity, minimize the number of surgical maneuvers, and whenever uh, you're taking up a patient for uh, recurrent uh, resurgeries, multiple resurgeries, it's always advisable to counsel the patient accordingly. So this is a patient where a scleral uh, a buckle got infected and it was it had to be removed. There was some amount of scleral necrosis and exposure of UL tissue. Three weeks later, the patient developed sympathetic ophthalmia, the typical uh, picture, and then had to be treated with intravenous methylprednisolone and high-dose oral steroids. High related complications of decentration and dis dislocation are well known, and we know the complications um, and the cause of this problem and how to deal with them. Sinai cake and form uh, because of the intraocular inflammation in the initial post-op period, which has not been well controlled. Uh, the best uh, is to prevent, have a capsule axis of around 5 to 5.5 mm, and prone positioning is essential uh, to uh, prevent sinicate. Silicon oil can migrate under the conjunctiva, and it, there are reports of transclinal migration as well. Uh, secure uh, sclerotrome is well, and control the IOP goes in a long way in preventing this complication. Visual field loss has been reported, central and paracentral, and uh, various pathogenesis has been uh, contemplated. These theories include intraoperative fluid exchange, maybe the culprit, and it may be also because of the tissue trauma, direct tissue trauma because of PVD induction or ERM island peeling. <clears throat> so there are many uh, cases where we know and the decision to treat and how to treat is not that uh, uh, difficult, but there are some unexplained uh, cases of visual loss following SOR with uh, different theories are there and it's yet to be proven. Uh, to summarize, uh, the if you have to summarize in one line, it goes as get it right the first time. Avoid three surgeries. Timely and judi judicious management of uh, the complications. Patient has to be kept in picture because there may be a good initial post-operative uh, result. And uh, these kind of complications can disturb the patient and the physician equally. Long-term follow-up is essential and that is imperative. Thank you so much.